these three stocks are up an average 32% since adding them to the Bowtie Index in July, and there is still more upside to come. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with an update to the official Bowtie Index, ticker BOWT, and a sector almost totally neglected by investors. In fact, I put three stocks from the industrial sector in the index last July, with all three now beating the market. Stocks in the industrial sector are down just 7% this year, beating the market by 13%, and these three are up an average of 32% over the period. I want to get right into highlighting those three stocks, so I'm going to show you later why the industrial sector has done so well, my outlook for next year, and why it's not too late to buy. First on our list of stocks, up 42% since adding it to the Bowtie Index in July, shares of Deere & Company, ticker DE. Deere books just over half of its revenue from agricultural equipment, seen here in the two darker green bars, but also some diversification through that construction and road building. Revenue is up 21% on an annual basis over the last three years, more than double the industry average as the company benefits from a, just a period of super normal growth. The average age of farm equipment in the United States is estimated at 17 to 20 years old, with aftermarket's parts demand increasing. That means equipment users are having to spend more on parts to service their older models. And given that the average useful life of a tractor is pegged at around 22 years, that average age is bumping up against the point where it's better to just replace a tractor. Now that combined with some technical advancements is driving a massive replacement cycle for Deere. The company is leading a revolution in autonomous tractor and farm equipment. Upgrading older models to the new technology is going to drive a surge in profitability, especially for the larger operators, and it's well worth the cost. For those of you following the index, or if you watched the first few videos where I explained how we're picking stocks, you know it's not just about sales growth. Deere also has a 17% operating margin, well above the 10% margin reported by peers. Now that means it's not only growing sales faster and taking market share from competitors, but it's more efficient doing it, able to turn that revenue into higher profits. Now that 42% increase in the shares means it's not a cheap stock anymore at 18.5 times on a price to earnings basis, but it's not really that much more expensive than the industry average either. The dividend yield is back down to about 1%, and any short-term news is probably baked into the stock at this point, but I would be a buyer again at any pullback in price. That equipment upgrade cycle is a years-long phenomenon, and it is going to continue to boost this best-of-breed stock. I'll highlight the other two stocks I bought for our Bowtie Index next, along with why you need exposure to that industrial sector. If you want to see all the stocks in the index, though, go to Stockcard and to the Idea Center. Click on the indexes, and you'll find the Bowtie Index. From there, you'll see the methodology we're using to pick these stocks, the videos detailing it, some great ways to contribute your own ideas, and the stocks in the index are along with their percentages. Don't forget to follow the index to get early access to videos and be the first to see when I add a stock. If you do sign up for StockCard, use the promo code BOWTIENATION, that's all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Next here, the lowest return on our list at an 11% return since July, but still beating the market, is Old Dominion Freight, ticker ODFL. Dominion is the second largest, less than truckload, or LTL operator in the United States, with a commanding 11% market share through 255 service centers in 48 states. LTL shippers have benefited from that surge in e-commerce over the last few years, and the company reports 70% of its shipments are next or second day delivery. That market dominance has helped Dominion produce a 13% annual revenue growth over the last three years, about 50% more than the industry average. Even more impressive, though, is the company's operating margin of 26%, more than three times the peer group average. This all comes together to make that company the best in breed in trucking, but it's it's a longer term force that made me add shares of Dominion. We've been waiting for self-driving trucks for years, but it's looking like that reality is only a couple of years down the road. Vehicle automation is already to the point where tests have been made with no driver behind the wheel on cross-country trips. And considering driver wages are the biggest single expense here. In fact, Dominion pays out more than 42% of its revenue as wages and benefits. When we get to commercialization of self-driving trucks, the profits are going to boom for the entire industry. Now that's more of a long-term reasoning, but those other tailwinds like e-commerce make for solid returns until that self-driving catalyst kicks it higher. I'll reveal that third stock next, but you know I'm not about just dropping a list of stock picks in your lap. I want you to understand what's going on here, why the industrials have beaten the market so much this year, and what happens next. I want you to be a better investor. If we look at the sector on an industry level, so the company's serving a more common product or service, it helps to see why the industrials as a whole has beaten the market. Versus a stock market down 20% this year, you have stocks in the aerospace and defense, as well as construction and engineering up 16 and 27% for the year. 
Even the industries in the red here, some like infrastructure and machinery, are still beating the market by a wide margin. And it was a near perfect year for those stocks in the aerospace and defense industry. The rebound in air travel and long-term stable government contracts would have made it a winning year anyway. Then that war in Ukraine meant the US and Europe would be sending weapon systems to aid the country, a big boost for stocks like Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. And for their part, construction, infrastructure, and heavy machinery companies have all benefited from that massive trillion dollar infrastructure bill signed November of last year and should be posting strong sales growth for years to come. Now all this, it just shows the power of the Bowtie Index strategy, right? Being sector neutral to make sure that we get exposure to every sector and then investing in the very best of breed stocks within each. I highlighted that strategy in our first few videos and I'm gonna link to those in the description below, but what this means is that we're following the sector weights in the broad stock market index. So if, for example, stocks in the industrial companies are 8% of the market, then that's gonna be the weight in the index. If we're then looking at to invest in the top 50 companies in the market, then we look for four companies that 8% of 50 in the sector to buy. Because by keeping that market weight exposure, wherever the surprise outperformance is in any given year by sector, we're gonna be there with stocks in the group. Then by narrowing our list down to those best of breed qualifiers, we can beat even that sector performance and the market. That's how our three stocks in the industrial sector have returned an average 32% versus 14% return on the sector overall, and how we were able to pick two of the top six stocks in a group of 72 companies. Of course, the big question, and then I'll reveal the stock up 45% since July, is are industrials now too expensive? We see here in a chart by FactSet Research, the Ford PE ratios for stocks in each sector. So the dark blue bars here are the current price of each stock in that sector divided by the earnings expected over the next year, the price to earnings ratio. And we do see here that industrials, circled in red here, are trading at 18.5 times on that PE ratio. That's above the long-term average of 17.6 times and above the average for the stock market at 17.3 times right now, so these certainly aren't value stocks, but they aren't the most expensive in the market either, like technology or consumer discretionary. So no, we're probably not gonna get these 30% plus gains in these stocks over the next year, but the longer term trends in infrastructure, construction, and transportation, those are still gonna be there to help them outperform. The Bowtie Index is a longer term focus, finding the very best stocks in each sector and then holding on to those for multi-year returns. The top performer in the group, in fact the best stock in the Bowtie Index, United Rentals, ticker URI, with its 45% return. United is the market leader in equipment rental with 15% of the market share, well above the next two competitors in a very fragmented market and growing that dominance with the recent acquisition of Ahern Rentals. The company books about half of its revenue from non-residential construction and the other half in industrial equipment. I like United for its international diversification as well, with business in Canada, Europe, and even Australia. United has beaten industry benchmarks on revenue growth and profitability for the last three years, growing sales by 18% last year and an operating margin of 23% versus the 15% industry average. But it's those broader market trends that has me really excited on this. Construction spending per capita has gone through a more than a decade of underinvestment after that housing bust, leading to a supply deficit in construction. Now that, combined with the trillion dollar infrastructure deal, could mean a boom in construction over the next several years. With interest rates rising though, small companies might not be able to afford the loans to buy that equipment outright, which could mean an increase in demand for rental operators like United. I'm investing in that strong industry trend and the best company in the group for the outsized return. Looking for safety stocks but with higher dividend yields? Click on the video to the right for the three stocks to watch, three picks in the consumer staples sector for your portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.